In alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah, guys. And as I was saying, um, today we're going to start a new topic. We just finished the topic of how to seek or how to attain happiness in this world. We were created to worship Allah, put here to be tested in our belief in Him. But that does not mean that you cannot be happy or content with this world. We talked about how the key to happiness, the key to contentment is having a solid foundation. And that solid foundation must consist of, number one, having the correct belief in Allah. Number two, the correct understanding of that belief. And then the correct implementation of that belief. Once you maintain that, you will become in harmony with yourself, in harmony with the law, in harmony with the universe, and you will be able to find contentment because you understand what your purpose is. You know what your goal is, what the ultimate goal is. You know what to stay away from. You know what to do to earn the pleasure of Allah. You understand that life is about pleasing Allah, not anyone else. And also, once you reach that level of contentment, guys, this brings us to the topic I'm going to begin today. There are certain things that we can do every day of our life and still earn blessings and earn favors and earn rewards from Allah because that's what it's all about, guys, making Allah happy with us. So that we can not only find contentment in this world, but there we'll also have a good ending. We'll end up spending eternity in paradise. And that's nothing but bliss, which is the highest level of contentment. But before I begin the lecture, and by the way, this is going to be a week-long lecture. It's going to take a week to complete this topic. I have an introductory, intro, introductory quiz on the screen just to see where you guys are in your understanding about blessings. Look at the first question. True or false? Blessings are achieved mainly through prayer and fasting. What do you guys think about that? Is that statement true or false? Blessings are achieved mainly through prayer and fasting. Would you say that statement was true or false? Please type your answers. Let me see. How many of you think it's true? How many of you think it's false? Okay. If he says false, Meleon, false, Iman, false, Faiza, Taylor. Does anybody think this statement is true? Courtney says false. Does anyone believe that, uh, that blessings are achieved mainly through prayer and fasting? Okay, good job. This is false, guys. In fact, there's a lot of people who pray and fast and don't get any blessings at all. Because again, if your prayers are not done the correct way, they're not even accepted. If your fasting is not done the correct way, it's not even accepted. And if you're indulging in sinful actions, Allah doesn't accept your prayers or fasting either. If you're indulging in sinful actions, actions, you're not getting any blessings or rewards at all for anything that you do in life. All your good deeds are in vain. If you're deliberately, intentionally indulging in sinful actions. So no, this is not true. Blessings are not achieved mainly through prayer and fasting. We achieve blessings through other means too. And we're going to talk about that over the next week. And that brings us to question number two. What exactly is a blessing? You'd be surprised how many people don't even understand the meaning of simple words. What is a blessing? Who can answer that? What exactly is a blessing? When we talk about blessings, what is a blessing? What are we talking about when we talk about blessings? When I'm talking about how you can receive blessings from Allah, what am I talking about? What is a blessing? Anyone? Come on, guys. We're being recorded. This is uh, recorded. Okay, Fatima and Amani said a blessing is something good, something you can use or benefit from. Laylee said a blessing is something that comes from Allah that he has bestowed upon us. Countless blessings. Okay, I just want to know what a blessing is. What is a blessing, Laylee? Laylee said a blessing is something that comes from Allah. Okay, Meleon. 
What is a blessing? Meleon said a bless, blessings are rewards that a person receives from Allah for doing a deed or an act correctly. Ifti said blessings are gifts or favors. And all of these answers are correct. What is a blessing? A blessing is a gift. A blessing is a favor that comes from Allah. A blessing is also a reward that Allah may give you because you did a good deed or, or did a good action correctly. Okay? All of those answers are correct. That's what blessings are. So anything good that happens in your life, is that a blessing, guys? Anything good that happens in your life, is that a blessing? Yes, it is. Okay? Let's look at question number three. True or false? A person can be blessed and not even know it. Is that true? Can a person be blessed and not even know it? Yes, this is true. Good job, Taylor. Good job, uh, Sister Iman. Good job, Norto. Izdahar, Awa. Exactly. There's a lot of people who are blessed and don't know it. We talked about that when we talked about how to find happiness. So many people focus on the negative things in their lives. So many people focus on the bad things in their lives that they don't really actually see that they are blessed. So yes, a lot of people are blessed and don't even know it. And then let's look, let's look at the last question here. The last question, true or false? What a person thinks is a blessing could indeed be a curse. Would you say that statement is true? What you think to be a blessing can actually be a curse. Would you say that's true or false? Mashallah, good job, Fatima. Good job, Courtney. Good job, Howard. This is true. Exactly. Izdahar gave us an example. Your children, you think, are a blessing, but they can grow up and be a curse. Remember the story of El Kidr. Remember the story that Allah tells us in the Quran of El Kidr. One of the things he did was he came upon a young boy and killed him. Moses asked, why did you kill that child? Stuck the law. And the El Kidder said because he would have grown up to disappoint his mother and father to hurt them. He would have grown up to be a bad person when his mother and father were righteous. So yes, there's a lot of things that we think are blessings, but indeed they are a curse. Children are an example. Also money. A lot of people think, oh, because I got a million dollars, that's a blessing. Well, if you don't spend it the correct way, you don't do it the way, do with it what Allah commands us to do, it can be a curse. It can lead to your downfall. It will lead to the, your hellfire. So there's a lot of things that a person may think is a blessing, but indeed it's a curse. So that's what this whole series that I'm going to begin for you guys is all about. There are certain blessings, blessings that we have in life that we're not even aware of. And also, what are those blessings and what are things that we can actually do? What are things that we can actually do on an everyday basis that will end up earning the blessings of Allah, rewards from Allah? That's what we're going to speak about for the next week. And this is great because you guys are just now finishing Ramadan. You are just now coming up out of Ramadan. Your faith is strong. You have your character developed well. You know your strengths, your weaknesses. You want to continue to gain reward, to gain blessings from Allah. Where well, I'm going to teach you some simple things you can do that will bring about blessings. First of all, let's ponder something that our Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. He said, whoever says the following 100 times a day, it will, they will receive the reward as if they have freed 10 slaves. They will also receive 100 good deeds. And Allah will erase 100 bad deeds from them. And that person will be protected against shaitan during the day until nighttime comes. 
And no one comes with a better deed than the person who does more actions than him. SubhanAllah. Did you guys hear what this blessing is? What is the thing to do? Well, first let me tell you the reward. If you do this, if you say these words, if you say these simple words, I'm getting ready to teach you just 100 times a day. That's the reward. As long as you're not deliberately, intentionally disobeying a law, in other words, as long as you're wearing your hijab, as long as you're making your prayers, as long as you ain't backbiting, slandering, gossiping people, you ain't smoking cigarettes, you ain't doing drugs, you ain't got no boyfriend, you ain't sitting up on Facebook, uh, FaceTiming men, as long as you are not deliberately, intentionally disobeying a law, then you will get the reward of 100 of your bad deeds being removed and, uh, and replaced with 100 good deeds. And you'll be protected against shaitan until nighttime. What is it? Well, all the prophet said you have to say is, there is no one worthy of worship in truth except Allah. And he has no partners. And to him belongs the dominion. And for him is all praise. And he is capable of all things. All you have to do is say that 100 times, guys. And I have it written here in Arabic for you, too. La yallah, yallahu, wa dahu la sharika, lahu, lahu al-moku, wa lahu hamdu, wa huwa ala kuli shayin qadir. I tried to write it in English phonetics to help you guys with the pronunciation. Let me read it again. See, I'm going to try to read it exactly as I have it written here. La ilaha illa allahu. Wadahu la sharika lahu. I did pretty good. Lahul moku wa lahul hamdu. Hamdu. Wa huwa ala kuli shayin kadir. I did a good job with English phonetics. So you can say it in English or you can say it in Arabic or you can say it in whatever language that you can say the meaning in whatever language you speak. If you do it a hundred times in one day, look at what it brings about. It brings about the reward of a hundred good deeds being given to you and a hundred of your bad deeds erased. But again, the key is you cannot be deliberately, intentionally doing something that you shouldn't be doing. That's the key. That's how a lot of us lose blessings. We do these things that I'm getting ready to teach you. But we lose the blessings because we can't let go of those cigarettes. We are too afraid to put our hijab on because we fear others more than we do a lot. Or we can't control our tongue. Or our body parts, our private parts. Also, here's another thing our prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, taught us. He said, if you say this, the words I'm getting ready to teach you now, if you thought the other one was too hard to say or too hard to remember, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you say this 100 times in one day, then all the mistakes that you commit will be wiped away, even if they were as many as the foam on the ocean. SubhanAllah. Again, none of us are perfect. We're human. We all make mistakes. What's the difference between a major sin and a minor sin? A major sin is when you knowingly, deliberately, intentionally disobey a law. That's a major sin. Mistakes. These are the sins that we commit because we didn't know they were sins. For example, the hadith that you read every day, that many Muslims misconstrue uh, mis, uh, the meaning of. The man who came to the prophet, he said, Oh, prophet of Allah, I am doomed, I am doomed, I'm going to hell. There's no hope for me. The prophet said, what are you saying that? He said, I kissed a woman. I kissed a woman, I didn't know. I kissed a woman, I'm doomed. The prophet said, you're not doomed. Don't you know that every time you make salat, you are forgiven for the minor sins that you commit from that prayer to the next? 
Every time you make voodoo, you are forgiven for the minor sins you commit. He said Allah has forgiven you for that minor sin, so go away. So a lot of people look at that hadith, they say kissing is a minor sin. No, it's not. It depends on if you knew it was haram or not. This brother had just converted to Islam. This companion had just become Muslim. And he did not know that kissing another woman who was not his wife was haram. So since he did not know, it's, a, it's not a major sin. It's a minor sin. It's a mistake. And Allah forgives us for the mistakes we make. Allah forgives us for the things that we didn't know. But had he known it was haram and did it, it's a major sin. Everybody understand that? So the prophet taught us that if we say the following words 100 times in one day, any minor sins or any mistakes you make because you didn't know they were haram will be forgiven. And what are those words? To simply say in English, far is a law for, from imperfection and praise is for him. Or simply to say in Arabic, Subhana Allahi wa bihamdihi. And this is my favorite saying. I say this every day, guys, all day and all night. And I can tell you this works. You feel this, this saying also brings about other blessings from Allah too. To simply say, Subhana Allahi wa bihamdihi. This is easy on the tongue. That means it doesn't matter what language you speak. It's easy for your tongue to form these words in Arabic. Supana Allahi wa bihamdihi. I got it written in the English phonetics. Supana Allahi wa bihamdihi. This is easy to learn. Just say that a hundred times a day. That will erase all your minor sins or all your mistakes. So many Muslims walk around like Brother Muhammad. Brother Muhammad here of our website, he's a good person trying his best to be a good Muslim, but sometimes he allows doubt to come in the way. Oh, Sister Layla, I didn't know this was haram. Well, brother, subhana Allahi wa bihamdihi. You're forgiven for all the mistakes you make. We have to have hope. Allah is not going to hold you accountable for the mistakes you make. And if it really bothers you, subhana Allahi wa bihamdihi, subhana Allahi wa bihamdihi, a hundred times in one day, and it will cancel them out. Also, another reward or another blessing from subhana Allahi wa bihamdihi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the words, subhana Allahi wa bihamdihi, they're easy on the tongue, but they are heavy on the scales because Allah loves to be praised. Allah loves to be glorified. Remember, guys, arrogance is Allah's cloak. Pride is his garment. He loves for us to glorify him and praise him. So, subhana Allahi wa bihamdihi, subhana Allahi ladim. See that? Subhana Allahi wa bihamdihi, subhana Allah hil adhim. What does that subhana Allah hil adhim mean? It means Allah is the sublime. And he is free. That means he is free from any imperfection. Subhana Allah hil adhim. He is free from any imperfection. So say this, guys, every day. And it will bring about such great reward for you. And again, also, in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the words that are most beloved by Allah are Subhana Allahi, Walhamdulillahi, Wa la ilaha illallah, Wa Allahu Akbar. Allah loves this type of praise. Allah loves this type of glorification. What did I say in English? Far is Allah from imperfection. Praise be to Allah. There is none worthy of worship except Allah. Allah is the greatest. Allah loves those words. And these words were more beloved by the Prophet than anything else. He used to always say that. Subhana Allahi. Walhamdulillahi. Wallahi Allah. 
Wa Allahu Akbar. Say that, guys, every day. It'll bring about so much reward from Allah. Also, Allah will protect you. It'll serve as a protection for you against that which was not meant for you. It'll keep the, your enemies at bay. It'll make it hard for them to hurt you, to harm you, to destroy you, to take you down or anything else. Because you have the protection of Allah. You have the angels of mercy. Allah will send the angels of mercy to surround you and protect you. Also, Another blessing of Supana Allahi wa bihamdihi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said again, say it a hundred times. If you say Supana Allahi, just Supana Allahi, just Supana Allahi a hundred times, Allah will write a thousand good deeds for you and he'll remove a thousand of your sins. Supana Allah. Brother Muhammad and the rest of us here who are so worried about our sinful actions. Subhanallah, Allah, just say it a hundred times and a thousand of your bad sins are removed and replaced with a thousand good deeds. See the hope. See the hope that Allah gives us of forgiveness. Also, there's other words we can say too that bring about many blessings and gifts from Allah. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, shall I not tell you of a statement which if you say it, it is a treasure of paradise? He said to simply say there is no capability, nor is there any power except with Allah. This serves as a great protection for you. And there it is. I have it written in the, in the English phonetics. Let's try to pronounce it the way I got it typed here for our new Muslims to see if it's a good way of saying it. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. I think I wrote it pretty good there. Okay. You can say the, any of these words in English or whatever language you speak, that's the meaning. Or you can say it in the Arabic. You know, the Arabic is easy to pronounce. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us how to say it in Arabic because these are simple words that are easy on the tongue. So if you can learn to say them in the Arabic, that would be even better for you guys. So try to say these things in Arabic because, you know, the prophet taught us these, the, how to say this stuff in Arabic. And it's easy. When he says easy on the tongue, that means it don't matter what language you speak. You can make your, your lips say this. But understand the meaning. You have to understand the meaning and you have to believe in the meaning. If you don't understand and believe the meaning, it ain't going to work. There's a lot of people that go around saying Arabic stuff and don't know what they're saying and they wonder why it don't work. Because you don't know what, what you're saying. It, it only works. The medicine only works if you believe in it. You have to know what you're saying and believe in it. So that's why I'm giving you the meaning in English. But if you can say it in Arabic, try to. That's even better. Because he taught us that in Arabic. Also, here's more about subhanallah wa bihamdihi. That's all you really need to learn here. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another hadith, whoever wakes up in the morning and lives to see the evening, if he ha says, SubhanAllah, he will be hamdi a hundred times, then no one can bring anything better than him before Allah on a day of judgment, except the person who has done what he has done. In other words, said, SubhanAllah, he will be hamdi Let me tell you how this hadith came about. One day the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in the mosque and a group of, of Muslims came to him and they were sad. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked them, why are you sad? They said, oh Prophet, we're poor. We don't have much in money. But there's other people who have converted to Islam who are rich, who have more money than we have. This is after the conquest of Mecca. This is when uh, the Meccans finally embraced Islam. You had people like Abu Sufyan, 
Muawiyah, Ikrimah, and all of them had become Muslim, and they were from the wealthy tribe, uh, tribe of the Quraysh. They had money. So some of the uh, other companions who had been with the Prophet in Medina, they became, you know, intimidated and sad. Shaitan likes to try to play games with us. And they came, they said, we don't have the money that they have. They got, they're, they're rich. So we'll never be able to catch up to them in, in, in earning Allah's reward. We'll never be able to catch up to them in doing good deeds because they got money. They can give money to support the army. Because remember, after the conquest of Mecca, the prophet had to fight against the Romans. So for the first time, you know, they had a big military because the Quraysh brought all these horses and camels and money because they were rich. So these companions felt bad. They said, there's nothing we can do to topple them, to out-top them because they got money over us. The prophet said, that is not true. He said, let me teach y'all something. Whoever wakes up in the morning and says, Supana Allahi wa bihamdihi, believing in that, and says it 100 times, and does not indulge in sinful actions, then he will stand before Allah and no one will be able to out-top you unless they believed subhanallah wa bihamdihi and said it every day 100 times in the morning when they woke up allah loves for us to begin our day remembering him so this is what the prophet was telling them if you wake up every day and start your day remembering allah praising him glorifying him then all the money in the world won't equal that and won't out top you Simply say, Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi when you wake up 100 times and live your debt, spend that day trying to earn Allah's reward and no one will out-top you. Subhanallah. Most of us are not rich. Most of us are just middle-class people trying to make it in life, trying to pay the bills. It's all about the rent, trying to put the kids through college. Trying to take care of those grandkids. We don't have much money to give in charity, but we can give subhanallah wa bihamdihi to Allah with our tongues every morning a hundred times. So again, a lot of blessings, a lot of rewards in subhanallah wa bihamdihi, guys. That's one of my favorite, you know, supplications. I say it all the time. Okay. Also, guys, a lot of us walk around each day worried about things happening to us. You're worried that somebody's going to give you the evil eye. You're worried that somebody's going to do witchcraft on you. There's a lot of people, I mean, I'm not that way, but there's a lot of pessimistic people out there. We talked about pessimism in our previous series on happiness. There's a lot of people that live in fear that someone's going to hurt them, you know, do evil to them. Well, one day a companion came to the prophet and shared with him this fear. This fear that someone may do magic on him or something. He asked the prophet, what can I do to protect myself from the evil, the jealousy, the hasid? of those who are Hasidim, who are envious of me. The prophet said, simply recite the last two surahs of the Quran in the evening and in the morning three times and say that Allah is one and that's all you need. And in another hadith, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I too used to worry about magic, people doing magic on me and people doing uh, evil on me. Until Allah sent down the last two surahs of the Quran and I simply recite them and I don't worry about anything else. So again, this is something I tell you guys because one of the most ignorant things to experience is you go to the mosque, you see a beautiful little girl with her parents. You go to her mother and say, oh, what a beautiful girl. 
you know, may Allah bless you. What a beautiful girl. And the mother says, Astaghfirullah, you made hasid on my daughter. Why? You didn't say mashallah. What? You didn't say mashallah, so you made hasid on my daughter. Now she's, she's going to end up ugly. I mean, you run into some fanatical, crazy Muslims like that. You so worried about somebody making hasid on your daughter, you say mashallah. That's what the hadith is. The hadith says you, when a person comes to you and compliments you, then you should say mashallah. And if the person who had, was envious, it would repel it. I don't have to say mashallah. I just gave you a compliment. You say mashallah. And if you even more concerned about somebody hurting you, recite the phallic and the nas. What are the two last surahs of the Quran? The phallic. And the Nas. Recite those two surahs. Recite them three times every day. And they will protect you against anybody's jealousy or magic or anything else that was not meant to harm you. See that? We don't have to get into arguments with people at the mosque. We don't have to walk around being pessimistic all the time. Recite the phallic and the nas every day three times, okay? Three times in the evening, three times in the morning, and say, la yala, ha yala, la, and call it a day. And ain't nobody going to do hasid on you. SubhanAllah. Okay? Unless Allah has decreed for it to happen. Also, A lot of us want forgiveness of our sins. All of us do. We all want to reach that, that ultimate goal of paradise. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the major supplication to say for forgiveness is, Oh Allah, you are my Lord, and there is no one worthy of worship and truth except you. You created me, and I am your servant. And I am abiding to your trust and promise to the best of my ability. And I seek refuge in you from the evil that I have committed. And I profess to you my sins. And, and I acknowledge your favor upon me. So forgive me because no one can forgive sins but you. You want to be forgiven? Say this supplication. So when you're talking to Allah, having your talk, which I hope you guys are still keeping that connection with Allah since Ramadan is over. Every evening after you put the kids to bed, I hope you guys are still having your, your, your nightly talks with Allah. Say these words to Allah. This is the, the, the way to ask for forgiveness of your sins. SubhanAllah. See, the Prophet taught us this. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is not anyone from amongst us who says in the morning or of every day and the evening of every night in the name of Allah with whose name nothing is harmed whatsoever on this earth nor in the heavens and he is all hearing and all knowing. If you say those words three times, nothing will happen to you at all unless it was meant to. So again, those pessimistic Muslims out there you didn't say mashallah. You cursed my child. No, you say mashallah, not me. And if it really, really bothers you, then why don't you say three times every day in the name of Allah, with whose name nothing is harmed whatsoever on this earth nor in the heavens. And he is the all hearing and all knowing that Allah will protect you from anything that's not meant for you. I also have it written in the fanatics here too, guys. The Arabic fanatics here too. Okay? So thus, guys, this is what we're going to be focusing on for the next week. How to gain reward from Allah. How to gain his protection. How to gain his forgiveness. How to gain good deeds, more good deeds. How to have more our bad deeds erased. 
to simply do these things. And by the way, you don't have to have voodoo. Let me emphasize this. You do not have to have voodoo to talk to a law. You can talk to a law anytime you want to. A woman can be on her menses and talk to a law. You can say any of these supplications when you're on your menses, when you're in a state of genuine. You do not have to be in a state of purification to talk to a law. You don't have to have a hijab on either, sisters. You don't have to go and put a hijab on it to talk to a law. You can talk to a law right now, laying in your bed before you go to sleep. When you wake up, when you walk and cleaning up the house, driving in your car. All it takes is a moment to say this, especially the subhanallah wa bihamdihi, instead of listening to rap music or listening to the news, worrying about the migrants. I mean, that seems to be the topic on Facebook. Muslims all over the world, I mean, it, all over America, I mean, with this Trump stuff about the migrant children, I mean, that's something, but hey, you can't tell me why I wear a hijab. You're the same Muslims with this stuff on there, this politics on their pages. They're the ones going around saying that Muslim women wear hijab for the same reason that a nun wears it. A stock for law, I do not wear a hijab for the same reason that a nun wears one. We don't have the same belief system. How dare you equate me to a Kafir, especially an idol worshiping Kafir. You have degraded me as a Muslim woman and you call yourself a Muslim man. You call yourself a scholar even. Mali's men think call themselves scholars because they famous and they got that crap on their pages. You can talk about the migrant situation. You can talk about President Trump. You can talk about the war in, in Syria, but you cannot explain why a Muslim woman wears a hijab. Shame on you. We have to get our priorities together as Muslims, guys. I'm not saying it shouldn't concern you what's going on in the world, but what should concern you more is your relationship with Allah. If Allah were to take your soul right now, brother, are you ready? Can you get through the questioning of the grave? If you can't explain why a woman wears a hijab, that means you're tall. He ain't there. If you're going to equate a Muslim woman with a Kafir, then you do not have the correct belief system. If you think that I am covering my body like I am right now, be for the same reason that that nun is, or some Catholic woman is, or some Jewish woman, then you're saying that my belief system is not correct. And if my belief system is not correct, if I die right now, I am dying as a Kafir. I stuck the law. Brothers, wake up. You brothers have let the fame get to you. You've gotten deviated away from true belief. You don't know what la ilaha means anymore. You lost that with the fame that you've developed due to Facebook and YouTube and traveling around the world giving lectures. You're not a scholar. You never were. But the people were stupid enough to think you were and they build up your ego and now you, don't, you can't even explain why a woman wears a hijab. And you have insulted me and every other Muslim woman on this planet. By saying that we are Kafirs, I'm doing it for the same reason a nun is who worships Mary and statues. A stuck for law. Fear of law, guys. Tick tock. The clock is ticking. It's all about pleasing a law. It's all about earning his rewards. That's why I'm doing this series. Focus on what would be pleasing to a law. Let that political garbage go. Because I'm going to tell you what's happening in the world today is happening because a law decreed for it to happen. And ain't nothing you can do can stop it. And this is just the beginning. It's going to get worse. Not just migrant children. It's going to get worse all over the, wo the world. 
There will be so much oppression that you won't be able to find no safe place on earth. So this is just the beginning. You freaking out over migrants. You better freak out over that angel of death pulling that soul from your body. You can't control what's going on in the world. There's nothing you can do to alter or stop that. But you can make the choice to save your soul from the hellfire. You can change the condition of yourself. And you brothers, especially those of you who call yourself scholars, when you really are not, you're just men who got famous off of Facebook. You're just a imam from the hood who got famous off of Facebook. You can change the condition of yourself. Get your Akita together. Learn why a woman wears a hijab. It ain't no badge in her heart either. Why don't you ask a woman like me why I wear one? Y'all hate me because I'm speaking truth here. Okay, guys, this is for everybody here, guys. You know, don't get caught up in the politics of the world. You can't stop that. You can't change that. And this is just the beginning. Allah said it's going to get worse. But you can change the condition of yourself. You can better yourself. And it all begins with the correct belief system. All right? Okay. So make sure everybody tunes in tomorrow. Tomorrow what I'm going to do is give you a quiz over what we learned today. And tomorrow I'm going to also give you more things that our Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, taught us to say or do that will bring about countless blessings from Allah. Okay? Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashad on la ilaha ila. And any questions or comments, you guys can go ahead and type them there on the screen. Okay. And by the way, guys, I think that this recording did not record.